From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pete Carlson, Johnny, Star Mutual. Oh, hiya, Pete. How's the family? Great. The lucky dogs are at Cape Cod for the summer while I toil and fret. What's fretting you at the moment? A letter, Johnny. Listen. If you're wanting to know who murdered Ellen Bates, you pay no mind to that person or persons unknown. You just look real close to home. Look real close to home. Postmark Shady Lane, Vermont. And the signature, I suppose, is that famous old name. That's right. Anonymous. Ellen Bates was killed there a month ago, shot to death. We carried a $10,000 policy on her. And the beneficiary? Ben Bates, her husband. He's got a farm about four miles out of Shady Lane. Uh Uh-huh. What's the status of the investigation? Stalemate, Johnny. The coroner's jury brought in an open verdict, and there's been nothing turned up since. We were just on the point of paying off the policy. But now, well... All right, Pete, I'll fret for you. If I can find Shady Lane on the map. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Star Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut... The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Shady Lane matter. Item one, $36.70. Transportation and incidentals, Hartford to Shady Lane, a quiet little town of around 1,000 population. Drowsy streets lined with white frame homes, picket fences, and flower-bedded yards. A town with a well-chosen name, built under the protecting shade of venerable elms and spreading maples. A country crossroads town with one of everything. One inn, one restaurant, one garage, one general store, one barber shop, and one constable, a gaunt and lantern-jawed leather-faced man of middle age named Jed Bramler. Yeah, it's a fact, Mr. Dollar. Lived here all my life. First time I've ever seen it this hot. Yeah, it's warm, all right. Mm, for this time of year, at least. Weather's changing. World, too. Everything's changing. <laughs> Except human nature. Mm, that, too, maybe. Take this killing. Don't rightly know how to go about dealing with it. Well, maybe we can figure out something between us. This the bullet that killed him? Yeah, that's the one. Hmm. It's an odd size and shape. Hand poured. Say it's hand poured. It's for an old fashioned squirrel rifle. Smooth bore, single shot. I see. And I reckon that's about all I can give you in the way of facts, or clues, I guess you call them. Oh, facts will do. All right. Ellen Bates was a fine woman, had a hard life. She was married, no children, she was alive. Now she's dead. Cause of death, a bullet in the heart. Them's all facts, Mr. Dollar. Mm -hmm. How did it happen? Don't rightly know. Weren't no witnesses. Could have been an accident, even. What do you mean, an accident? Well, one of them hunters from the city. Them through here regular, confounded idiots. Shoot at anything that moved. Well, surely not at a human being sitting in her own living room. They might have. Never can tell, crazy as they are. Shot a goat, belonged to Het Wilmer last fall. Caught him with it, tied on their bumper. Said it was a mountain sheep. Yes, but Yes, they... might have done it unintentional. Then got scared and run out. Yes, possibly. Except for one of those facts. Which fact? This bullet. Hunters from the city don't use old-fashioned squirrel rifles, Mr. Bramler. Mm-hmm. Well, I said it could have been accidental. Didn't say it was, though. I, uh... I reckon somebody meant to kill her. Oh, I don't think there's much doubt of that. There ain't. Wish there was. Might not feel so danged worthless then. What do you mean? Ellen Bates was a fine woman. Hate to think of somebody killing her and getting clean away with it. Then let's make sure they don't get away with it. Got nothing to go on, Mr. Dollar. Not one lonesome thing. What about a possible motive? Haven't turned up a single one. Did she have any enemies? Everybody that knew her loved her. Uh What about this bullet? Did you have a ballistics check made? Yeah. Send it clear to New York. They come up with anything? Six-page report. Yes, got it here somewhere. You can look at it if you want to. No, no, no need to. Uh, what was their conclusion? Same as mine. Fired from an old-fashioned squirrel rifle. Uh-huh. Know anybody around here who might own a gun like that? Yeah, but near anybody in the township. Must be three, four hundred of them rifles around. Keepsakes. Handed down. Family souvenirs. Yeah. Then that's one dead end. Couldn't be much deader. It's like I told you. Ain't no clues at all. At least none to speak of. 
Woman without an enemy in the world, sitting in front of her window, shot fired from outside the house, woman's dead. Them's the facts. And all the facts. No. Not quite all. Eh? What do you mean? People. Persons are facts, you know. And their relations with other persons are facts. Facts that we can check on. Already told you, Mr. Dollar, Ellen Bates didn't have no enemies. The person who killed her wasn't exactly a friend. Known enemies, I mean. But she had contacts and relations with other persons, and one of them, known or unknown, was her enemy. Maybe an accidental enemy with a motive in the capacity for murder. What do you mean by accidental? Maybe Mrs. Bates saw something from that window of hers. Something that made her dangerous to someone else. Maybe she didn't even know she'd made an enemy. Yeah, might be. Or maybe it's just a matter of her death benefiting somebody. Somebody who otherwise wouldn't be her enemy. Mm Mm-hmm. It thought of that, of course. But it don't lead nowhere. It might. I've got a letter here, Mr. Brambler. I wish you'd take a look at it. All right. It arrived yesterday at the home office of my client in Hartford. Mm -hmm. It was mail here in Shady Lane. Close to home. Look real close to home. (laughs) Not signed, eh? No, not signed. Any idea who might have sent it? Yeah, somebody with a lot of vinegar in their blood. No, don't know. It's a fact. Wouldn't count too much on it if I was you. What do you mean? Well, like you just said, a matter of her death benefiting somebody. So? With that insurance policy like it is, the person that'd benefit most would be her husband, Ben Bates. Forget him. Why? Like you said, motive and capacity. Even if money was motive enough for Ben, he just hasn't got the capacity for murder. Forget him. Is Ben Bates a good friend of yours, Mr. Bramler? Since we were boys together. I see. Mm -hmm. Maybe you only think you see. I ain't making allowances for him. Just know him, that's all. Maybe I'd better meet him. All right. Farm's just out of town a ways. I'll drive you out there if you want. Oh, I'd appreciate that. Uh, Only one thing, though. uh, You've got an expense account of some kind, ain't you? Sure, that's right. Why? Well, we're not exactly poor folks up here, but we ain't rich neither. And the township is kind of frugal with their money. I see. Going to have to charge you for the car expense if it's uh, all right with you. Oh, sure. That sounds fine. Yeah, well then. Uh, maybe we could make a couple of other calls on the way. Who'd you want to see? Well, mostly I'd like to talk to the coroner here and... You, uh, you already have. Huh? Yeah, I'm the coroner, Mr. Dollar. Well, are we ready? <laughs> Expense account item two, three dollars even. Transportation and Constable Jed Bramler's car from Shady Lane to the Ben Bates farm. It was a pleasant trip. Summertime and a country road winding among the farms, climbing lazily over the ridges. The heady, pungent scent of flax and clover, the hum of bees. But I couldn't completely enjoy it. I kept wondering how much real help I could expect from a constable who'd already made up his mind that the top suspect wasn't capable of murder. A constable who was also coroner. And for all I knew, county attorney and district judge. A constable who might even be... Just an idle thought. Might even be a murderer. Uh, this is the Preeny farm. Ben Bates's place is the next one. About a quarter of a mile. I see. That's uh, Martin Preeny there at the side of the road working on that fence. Might as well pass the time of day with him, I reckon. Were the Preenies and the Bates good friends? Yeah. Real close. Afternoon, Jed. Martin. Township must be getting lax, letting you go gallivanting around on pleasure trips. Being paid for, Martin. Official business. This here's uh, Mr. Donnie Dollar from down around Hartford. Martin Preeny, Mr. Dollar. Mr. Preeny. I do. That's quite a job you're doing there, Mr. Preeny. Well, a rock wall does just fine if you stack them real careful so they lock together. Looks pretty difficult. Yeah, it takes a knack, no doubt about that. And work and time. But if it's dug in below the frost line, rock wall will last a lifetime. And uh, that's what I believe in, Mr. Dollar. Planning ahead and building right. That's a good philosophy. Uh, And then, too, a rock wall is a sight cheaper than fencing. And right there is his real reason, Mr. Dollar. A man that wastes his substance is a fool and a sinner. I believe in prudence. It's your only virtue, Martin. Fiddlesticks. We got callers, Sarah. Come on out here. No, ain't staying, Martin. Just passing. Just a minute. Martin. Just, uh, what so-called official business you on, Jed? Murder of Ellen Bates. Mr. Dollar here is an insurance investigator. He's come to look into it. I see. Well, it's a terrible tragedy, Mr. Dollar. Sad thing for the whole township. It's 
especially for Sarah and me. Yes, I imagine so. Yeah, they've been good neighbors, fine people. Folks about to be proud to know. So I understand. Couldn't help feeling sorry for him. Just didn't seem to get ahead in spite of Ben being a good hard worker and all. And then this, on top of all the other trouble he'd had. Well, what do you mean by trouble? Afternoon, gentlemen. Come here, Sarah. I want you to meet a friend of Jed's, Mr. Johnny Dollar, my wife Sarah. Mrs. How Rennie. Do you? Mr. Dollar comes from Hartford. Hartford? Well, then he's here for. He works for an insurance company. He's given Jed the hand with this Ellen Bates thing. Oh, yes, I I see. Well, don't let me interrupt. I uh, I just tell him, Mr. Dollar, what good neighbors the Bates have always been. A body couldn't ask for a better friend than Ellen Bates. Mr. Prini, you said something about all the other trouble they'd had. I was referring to Ellen's illness. Why, after that operation last year, she was pretty near an invalid, you might say. Yeah, ben had to wait on her hand and foot, along with doing for the house and running the farm. Huh, a lot of time he spent taking care of her. Now, Sarah. Not half as much time as he spent hanging around that girl. What girl is that, Mrs. Prenner? Why, that little flippity jibber that works at Sarah! The... I'm sorry, Martin, but it's true and you know it. Uh, uh, Mr. Dollar, I'm afraid my wife is just repeating gossip she's heard. Ben Bates is a fine young man. Any story to the contrary, idle rumors, nothing more. Well, sometimes the best way to stop an idle rumor is to check into it. If you'd care to tell me who she is. I know the girl, Mr. Dollar. Her name is Millie Wells. She's a waitress at the Shady Lane Cafe. I'd like to talk to her. You can, when we get back to town. Well, folks, reckon we'd better be getting on. Hey, Mr. Dollar, Ellen Bates was a fine woman. Whoever it was killed her, I hope you get him. I believe we will. Oh, and by the way, Mrs. Freeney... The company was very grateful for your letter. My letter? I mean, how did you know it I was... didn't know. I was just guessing. Oh. Nice to have met both of you. See you again. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, of two who are not even accused, one confesses and one denies, and both very strangely. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Les Crutchfield, and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.